Hey guys, Keisha here for Variety Radio Online. Today is September 10th, and I'm gonna talk Guardians of the Galaxy. I come from Earth, a planet of outlaws. My name is Peter Quill. There's one other name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star-Lord, man. Legendary outlaw. Guys? Forget it. So here's what I liked about the film. First of all, the cast is fantastic. You have Chris Pratt, who's so charismatic and funny, you just want to drink beers and tell fart jokes all day. And then there's Zoe Saldana, who's so beautiful and badass, I just want to skin her alive and wear her. Although that's pretty creepy. Anyway, you have Vin Diesel, Bradley Cooper, Dave Bautista, who's a WWE wrestler, hell, even John C. Riley was in this, and Lee Pace, who I'm used to as playing these really lanky, sensitive guys, and he comes out of nowhere and becomes this big, bulky badass known as Ronan the Accuser. Like, who knew? And Benicio Del Toro, as the collector, made me want to dye my hair platinum blonde and wear fur coats and smoke cigarettes, although that kind of sounds like Cruella de Vil as well. Anyway, he was fabulous. I thought the soundtrack was great. I really enjoyed the retro feel with the cassette player, and they even had Jackson 5 there at the end. And obviously, I love the costumes. But what really set this movie apart was just the cast. They were they gelled so well, and it felt natural. And, you know, it was kind of like the Avengers, and I don't want to compare the movies, but it was just fun and relevant. They took so many liberties, I mean, with uh, the, the big hero flicking the guy off and doing all the things that we wish we could do. I think that's what makes this movie different. It's like you're sitting there and thinking, if I was a superhero, I'd probably be like that guy. That guy's really cool. They call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. This might not be the best idea. Here's what I didn't like. First of all, before the film even started, I was blindsided by the trailer for The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, which is one giant cry fest. Pippin sings that song from Return of the King, you know, the depressing one where Farmer's army goes off to basically die? Yeah, that one. And then flash cut to the opening scene where Peter, Peter Quill's mom dies of cancer. Great! Yeah, I came out to have a good time, and now I'm feeling personally attacked. What the hell? Okay, I know that had nothing to do with the film, but it still made me angry. But anyway, the only scene in the film that I didn't like was the space death scene where Peter Quill gives his mask to Gamora so that she could live. It came off as this giant epic sacrifice for love, which it totally wasn't because they'd only just met. And it felt like their their romance was just budding. It just started and they kind of rushed through it. And, you know, just a note for all filmmakers out there, you don't have to throw in this epic romance story to make us care about the characters. We cared about them anyway. And I liked the flirtations between uh, Quill and Gamora, and I would like to see more of that in the second film. But for the purposes of this movie, it was just too much, too fast, basically. So, slow down, crazy. Slow down. So here we are. <laughs> A thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. Overall, I thought this movie was great. It was fun, action-packed, and totally hilarious. Um, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Get up and don't even take time to put on pants. Just go see it. It's awesome. Um, and I'm going to give it an A-. minus. It would have gotten an A+, plus if Chris Pratt was naked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously. Oh, what time?